Hello and welcome to our SEH screencast. In this screencast, we will look at the UTN Manager and focus on how easily you can use the many functions of the UTN Manager via the command line. Using these new functions offers you the following benefits. If you wish, users in your network no longer need to use the UTN Manager. Operations can be scripted and automated using the command line interface of the UTN Manager service. For example, you can integrate the connection of a USB device directly into a user's login script. This will be executed automatically when the user logs in. Another great feature is the device pool. If you have several identical devices connected to your USB device server, you no longer need to define which USB port should be activated. UTN Manager will pool these devices together and activate one which is not in use automatically. All in all, these are some really great features. They allow for the seamless integration of USB devices into your network. So let's see how it all works. I've already opened the UTN Manager so you can see how a particular device is activated. Also, we'll need to read a few values from this screen which we'll use in the command line interface. You can see below that I've also opened the Windows command line interface. This is where we'll be working. The command line executable of the UTN Manager is called utnm.exe. You'll find it in the UTN Manager installation directory. You can run this executable from any directory you wish. As an example for this screencast, I've created the folder seh on the C drive and stored the file there. Let's look at the general syntax for connecting a device. I start the command line for activating a device with utnm.exe forward slash c. The forward slash c is the command switch. You'll need to use this when issuing any commands. Following the switch, commands need to be written between simple quotation marks. To activate a device, we start the command line with the word activate followed by the IP address of the USB device server we wish to work with. After that, I have to define which device I want to activate. This is done with the help of the manufacturer and product IDs, which we can read off of the UTN manager. In order to find these values, you need only to click on the respective device and look at the feature side of the UTN manager. After the IP address, I type these two values in the order manufacturer ID space product ID space. Now I can enter the USB port to which the device in question is attached. Like before, this information can be found in the UTN Manager. If we don't specify a port here, the UTN Manager will automatically activate the first available port on the server. Well, basically, that's all. The second quotation mark completes the command, and by pressing Enter, we send the command. As you can see, this activated the USB stick at port 1. To deactivate the device, just change the command from Activate to Deactivate. It's that simple. As before, I send the command by pressing Enter. You can see the USB stick at port 1 is now deactivated. I will now close the UTN Manager so that I can show you that you don't need to use it. I'll open the workstation and you can see that the USB stick is not currently connected to the system. Now I use the command to connect again and we can see the USB stick is connected to the system without further ado. And then using the command to deactivate we can simply disconnect it again. We have gotten to the end of our screencast about activating and deactivating devices via the command line. You now have a great feature to automate the operation of USB devices on your network. And we would not be SEH if this were the only new function. To see all the commands which we support at the moment, just run the utnm.exe program followed by the forward slash and the word help. So, have some fun with automating the UTN Manager, and I hope to see you on our next screencast.